Hey there everyone, it is November 1st and time for my October collection update. Quite a bit more than I was actually expecting this month. Yeah, I got all the stuff I was expecting to get and then some stuff came out and then I just happened to get some other stuff by chance. Um, everything but wall scrolls because I don't think I'm ever going to be doing that again. Um, so we got DVDs, Blu-rays, CDs, and quite a bit of video game stuff. So we're actually going to end with video games for the first time in a little bit, I think. We might have done it the last couple months, I don't remember. Anyway, we will get started with this, actually. My coworker Charlie went to Disneyland, and he actually got me this, and it's sort of movie-related, so I figured I'd show it here. It is a little tiny Cheshire Cat ball. Uh, more expensive than you probably think. I can't remember how much you said it was, but it's a little Cheshire Cat ball. It even has the Disney thing, but yeah, little dis little keychain type deal. Cool, cool stuff. Anyway, going on to actual movies, uh, these first two I actually got at my work again. Um, they were really cheap, and I have actually seen both of them, and um, I thought they were pretty cool, and they were pretty cheap, so I'm like, why not just buy them? They were a couple bucks a piece. Uh, first up, we have Be Kind Rewind with Most Deaf and Jack Black. Um, basically a movie about two people who work in a video store somehow Jack Black's character is like statically charged and he deletes a bunch of movies so they have to hand shoot everything to remake them which doesn't make any sense but um, it was a pretty funny movie back when I saw it on Netflix a couple years ago I actually think is where I saw it um, it was pretty good uh, definitely worth the money I spent on it I'd say um, but yeah good good stuff then the other movie was Yes Man uh, not Jim Carrey's best movie, but definitely one of his uh, better ones that he's done, or he did for a while. Because, um, like, the number 23 was crap. Uh, one of these days I should get Eternal Sunshine, probably. Um, but if this has got Zoe Deschanel back before she got famous, which is pretty funny. I didn't realize this movie was from 2008. 2009? I thought this movie was older than that. Wow. Okay, but decent movie. It's basically a movie about a guy who doesn't say... He decides, I'm not going to say no to anything for a while. So, yeah. And, yeah, it's a comedy. Hilarity ensues. And whatnot. I don't like that sound. Yep. Part of the case is broken. Nice. Okay, we'll just throw that away. Uh, but, yeah, good movie. Yep. That's it for DVDs. We go on to Blu-ray, where I have three of those. Um, this first one I didn't even intend to get, but I kind of went into Best Buy looking for a webcam, a new webcam actually, and I ended up seeing this and I'm like, okay, it's been too long, I need to see this now. And that is actually Anchorman 2 The Legend Continues. Um, unfortunately, the little box thing is ripped, I don't know how I managed that. But on the back here it, it says it includes a supersized R-rated version with 763 new jokes and four hours of special features, but I don't know if there's exactly that many, because I have, I did actually watch the unrated version and the R-rated version. Um, there's a difference, a lot of difference, um, but the ending's still the same. Um, I, <laughs> this movie is absolutely hilarious, enough so that I could basically watch the same movie twice in, a, in like the span of a week, and it was really, really funny. Um, Definitely lives up to the first one in my book. Um, I don't think it came out at the right time for it to be as quite as iconic as the first one, but still a really funny movie, and Brick, Steve Carell, is my favorite character in this movie. Um, basically, there's a lot of throwbacks to the to the first movie. Uh, certain characters are in it again. Um, there's obviously new characters and stuff, but... There's another fight scene with a bunch of cameos. I'm not going to ruin any of them. This movie was absolutely hilarious. Uh, definitely, if you have seen the first one and have not seen this, go watch it. And if you haven't seen either of them, go watch them both. This movie is really, really good. Then to close out my movie pickups, um, if you remember last month, I think it was. Maybe it was August. I don't remember. 
but I'm going for all of the Robin Williams movies. Well, I probably picked up two of his biggest ones this month. I haven't watched either of these yet, ever, and they're two pretty iconic movies, so one of these days I will watch them. That being Dead Poets Society and Good Will Hunting. I got Good Will Hunting first, but... I mean, he's more of a minor role in this one, but in this one he plays a pretty major role. Um, and actually, the guy who played Wilson in House is also a pretty main character in this movie. But, oh, Captain, my Captain. Um, but yeah, um, I need to get around to watching these, because these are probably two of his most iconic roles. Um, yep, still looking into getting all of his important stuff. I made, like, a document on my computer of all of his movies that I wanted, and there's still quite a few on there, so eventually I'm slowly but surely whittling my way through. I don't know why I'm buying them on Blu-ray, that's the funny thing. I just end up doing it. I guess now that I have the PS3, I actually want to get Blu-rays, which sucks, because all the DVDs I have... Like, I almost want to be like, okay, let's get the Blu-rays now, but I don't, that would be extra money. But, yeah, definitely... These are supposed to be absolutely amazing movies, so I will make it a point to watch these. Alright, that's it for Blu-rays and DVDs. We now move on to CDs. We have six of them this month. So, we will start off with... This is uh, Damnation Angels Bringer of Light. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. Um, this is actually one of the opening bands from Prog Power, not this year, but last year. Um, they didn't impress me live. They actually sounded terrible. Uh, I was told later, or I found out later, that that was one of their first times live, so I can't really blame them for that. Um, uh, the reason I actually decided to buy this album, there were a couple songs that impressed me back when I first heard it. Um, or th for a couple songs. And then... Um, I actually recently have been getting into their lead singer on YouTube. He does a lot of anime covers and just heavy metal covers of like Disney music and whatnot. His name's Pelike. That's part of the reason I bought it. I need to get some of his stuff, but that's going to be hard. On Facebook, they actually just announced that they are working on a second album. I can't remember what it's called right now, so this is their only album right now. Um, uh, some tracks here. Uh, the Longest Day of My Life is Really Good and Pride the Warrior's Way. And then they do a cover of No Leaf Clover, which is a live-only thing from Metallica, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, uh, power metal, plus their singer can go frickin' high. Gonna be fun to listen to. Then we have... This is Delane, We Are The Others. This isn't their newest album, it's actually the one before their newest one, because they just had another one come out this year, but I had this one on the list, so I bought it. Nice little... Just little case. Um, this is... I don't know a lot about this band. My dad has seen them. He suggested them to me. They play prog power and stuff. Uh, basically another female-led band. Um, Charlotte Wessels is the singer. Um, right. I keep seeing her name. Um, but yeah, I've heard a little bit of their stuff. Uh, can't remember... I can't remember what... Uh, it was that I heard, but they do a cover of apparently Hit Me With Your Best Shot right here. And so that'll be fun. And then some live stuff at the bottom. So we'll see what we got. Definitely excited to listen to this one too. Then we go on to some more popular bands, except the last one here. But uh, this is a band I never thought I'd buy a CD for. But then I heard this one. Uh, this is actually the album I heard at Prog Power as like a gold badge only thing. This is... Evergrey's new album, Hymns for the Broken. Um, I actually heard it, as I said. Was really impressed by it. Um, I could never get into Tom England, the singer. I could never get into him. But then I heard this, and I'm like, wow, I'm actually really impressed by this. So I bought it. Turns out this is actually like a two-CD limited edition with the entire album. And then some. the bonus CD has just piano versions of certain songs, uh, which apparently there's one that's not even on this CD. <laughs> Um, so yeah, two, a whole three songs, ooh, <laughs> for a second CD. Depending on how much I like this CD, I'll probably end up picking up some of their other ones. Um, I am really excited to listen to it because it, it sounded really good. Um, but yeah, excited to listen to this one. Um, then we go on to another headliner from Prog Power, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I finally picked up another one of these guys. I've been meaning to for a long time and I finally got around to it. That being Sabaton, this is the Art of War rearmed, which has some bonus tracks. It's a re-release, I guess. Um, this isn't. They actually came up with a new album since I got the one I have, Carolus uh, Rex, um, or Carolus Rex. Sorry. Um, they came out with another one, but this is two CDs before Carolus Rex. Um, the only reason I bought this one is because it was A on the list when I originally listed this band, but it has Ghost Division, which is what they opened with when I saw them last year at Prague Power, and then Art of War is good, 40 to 1, Cl Cliffs of Gallipoli, Price of a Mile, yeah, I've heard a lot of these songs, and then there's the bonuses, or pre some pre-production demos, a live track, and Swedish Pig, uh, just a bunch of bonus tracks, but I really like Sabaton, um, so I'm definitely excited to listen to this as well. Definitely, definitely excited. Going to be fun. Then we go on to uh, the sequel to a CD, or prequel technically, to a CD I really liked that I listened to last year. This is the second Avalon CD, Timo Toki's Avalon, Angels of the Apocalypse. Um, it's uh, pre technically a prequel to the first one, even though it's newer. Um, I love the artwork, though. I mean, look at this artwork. So nice. Um... Um, I, I've listened to bits and pieces. It doesn't sound quite as good, but it's supposed to be heavier than the first one. So, yeah, it's Timo Tolki. I mean, Stradivarius. But um, this this CD has Fabio Leone from Rhapsody of Fire and Angra that I found out recently. Uh, Floor Jansen, the newest singer for Nightwish, and After Forever, I believe, is what she was also from. Uh, Zach Stevens, ex-Sabotage and singer of Circle to Circle. Simone Sim Simmons and Elise Ridd. Yeah, it's, it's going to be insane when I finally get around to this CD, but definitely excited to listen to this. And it's different than the other one. It's not a jewel case. It's a little booklet thing, but hey, what do you do? And then last but certainly not least, the only reason this one is last is the fact that I, one, did not expect to get another CD from this band quite this soon and for as cheap as I did. That being Poets of the Fall. This is their brand new album that just came out, Jealous Gods. Um, basically the cheapest place most of the time to buy their CDs because they're from, uh, God, like Sweden or Norway or something. Somewhere in the Norse area. Um, Finland. They're from Finland. I'm stupid. Anyway, <laughs> um, same thing. But uh, most of the time the cheapest place to get their CDs are from their website and it's still like over $20 because it's in euros uh, but I was able to find this CD for relatively cheap on Amazon like less than $20 total so I picked it up in a heartbeat I have actually heard the very first song Days here it was pretty good um, but I have another friggin Poets of the Fall CD are you kidding me? <laughs> This is going to be fun to listen to. Definitely, definitely. We'll see. Poets of Fall. Okay. That is it for CDs. We now go on to video games to finish this up. Um, first of all, I did get a game on Steam because it's actually this month, this last month was my birthday. Um, didn't really get a whole lot as, aside from gifts. There were a couple I can count as gifts. Um, what I'm about to talk about and then the next thing after that. Um, but my friend's family got me a game on Steam. They actually got me South Park The Stick of Truth. Um, I played the game for about three, two or three days um, and it was fun. It is a freaking fun game and it's surprisingly entertaining. Um, unfortunately I got myself stuck because I think I tried to play the game too fast or something and I got stuck in a part where I can't leave so I have to start over. And then I just stopped playing because I didn't really feel like doing that. Uh, I will get back to it because that game was really, really fun. And it's a lot of fun to play. And I mean, one of the classes you can be is a Jew. And that's messed up, but still hilarious. <laughs> but great. Cannot wait to play that again. Then we go on to physical copies of games that I got. Um, quite a few retro games this month, I'm actually surprised. And paid for none of them, though. So... We will see, uh, or we will see, I'll show you, 
Um, these first three are NES games. I got them from my girlfriend, and she got them from a friend of hers, and she said, consider these your birthday slash Christmas presents. I'm like, okay. I wasn't expecting much, but boy, was I surprised. Um, if you've seen the most recent package from my girlfriend video, then you know what these are already. But um, my NES is being a little finicky, but I guess they're always finicky. Um... So this first one doesn't work, but the other ones I got to work eventually. Uh, first up we have Monopoly. Um, I don't even know what to expect from this game, because it's the only one that doesn't work. But it's a game that ruins friendships. That's what I will always call Monopoly. I don't know what the point of having it on the NES is. I mean, I already have the board game, so I don't really see what the point is, you know? But hey, free game. Cannot argue with that. Next we have... And, well, really, these next two actually really surprised me when I pulled them out of the box. Um... That being the first one, Dr. Mario, a pretty quirky little puzzle game, pretty famous. Not a lot of explaining, just pills, match colors, kill stuff, kill viruses. I was really surprised when I got this one, because it's at the top of my list, this and the next one, for NES games. So, <laughs> I have so many NES games that I wanted already. It's hilarious how quickly I was able to get them compared to other systems. But definitely excited to have this one as well. And finally, and certainly not least, Mario Brothers Duck Hunt combo cart. Um, I have Mario 2 and Mario 3. I do not have a light gun for the record. I'm going to now, though. But I, do, I, I was looking for the original Mario Brothers. I was originally trying to just get the single cart of Mario Brothers, but this helps. This helps a lot. I mean, I have all the Mario games, the originals, and All-Stars on Super Nintendo, which is kind of funny. But... Yeah, Mario Brothers Duck Hunt, I, I cannot complain about that. Can't complain at all. And they're all in really good condition, which is surprising. Then we go on to Super Nintendo. Yes. If you remember, in last month's collection update, I might have mentioned that I had a package from my girlfriend's friend coming in the mail um, that I knew what they were, and it was a copy of, well, Championship Edition. Yeah, actually, I did talk about what they were. Um... These being those games, we have the original NBA Jam here on the left, and NBA Jam Championship Edition, Tournament Edition, I'm sorry. But yes, two different versions of the same game, except there's some different players and whatnot, so it's... I prefer probably the original, because that's the one I played the arcade version of in middle school. But yeah, definitely excited to have the original NBA Jam. Two different copies, why not? I got them for free, I can't complain. Um, yeah, Super Nintendo. NBA Jam is such a fun game, though. Like, it's like two buttons. Anybody, even people who don't like sports games can play this. It's two buttons. Three buttons, really, actually, now that I think about it. Block, pat, yeah, yeah, there's three. Okay, we go on to newer stuff now. Uh, two pre-orders came out this month. Well, technically more, but that's not the point. Two pre-orders that I was expecting to come out this month came out this month. Uh... I'm going to start with the handheld one, which is funny because I think it's a better game, probably. Uh, that being the new Super Smash Brothers, which w originally was titled Super Smash Brothers Universe. Now it's just Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS, which means the Wii U version is going to be Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo Wii U, apparently. Um, I've played a little bit of this game. I played the demo a little bit, too. Um, I just... I'm so I'm just so used to Smash Brothers being a multiplayer that with without people that have it easily ready, I just haven't played it enough. I have some people. Um, I mean, I've played it a little bit. It's just I don't quite know what to say. It's it works. I think it works quite well on the 3DS. It's just the Wii U version is gonna be so much better, and I cannot wait for that. It comes out the same day as Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, though, so I'm gonna be getting all three of those on the same day. Plus the GameCube adapter and the special GameCube controller. Hint, hint of what's coming later. Anyway. But, yeah. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, this game is it's fun. It's definitely going to be fun when I go on like road trips or when I go to Seattle with my friends. One of them's going to have it and we're just going to beat the shit out of each other. It's going to be amazing. So, well, not literally, you know what I mean. But definitely going to be fun. Fun game. Then on to an Xbox 360 game. I honestly... Part of me wishes I hadn't quite pre-ordered it, but it ended up being alright so far. 
so we'll see. Um, that is WWE 2K15. Um, I remember them announcing this game and it was going to have a whole bunch of features only on Xbox One and PS4, so I was kind of pissed off that I pre-ordered it. But, I mean, it's got NXT Showcase, which has a bunch of, like, not main event superstars. And then the 2K Showcase, which shows the Shawn Michaels Triple H feud and the John Cena and CM Punk feud, which is weird because CM Punk isn't in WWE anymore. But it's... it's. And they also, another thing I can complain about is they got rid of the ability to create your own finisher, and that kind of makes me mad because that was the most fun thing to do when you created a person was give them their own finisher. How do you get rid of that, man? <laughs> but, no, it's it's pretty fun. I've played quite a bit of it now. Um, finish the Triple H Shawn Michaels feud part. I'm in the... I'm cross doing the two K or the, uh, the 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 NXT showcase part and the John Cena CM Punk feud thing, so it's pretty fun and it feels a lot more smooth than Two K fourteen did. Um, it really does. They definitely did polish it out a little bit more, but good game. I'm 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 okay with it, but we'll see. I'll play it more eventually. All right, then we go on to the one of the surprise things. Well, the big surprise thing from this month. Um, I was not quite expecting these to come out because you know they seem to be for you know Super Smash Brothers, and then all of a sudden, oh, here's some controllers that you can use in. In your, in your games, but you can't use it until Smash Brothers comes out because the adapter doesn't come out until Smash Brothers comes out, which is just stupid to even release the. It's like let's release some controllers before the game that you know is releasing the adapter for comes out. But yeah, so I got a couple of uh, well, GameCube controllers, but they're not labeled that on the box as you soon will see. I am just peeling off a label because a. I'm not opening these, and this will definitely ruin the, the value of the of the thing inside. And it just looks tacky. Fortunately, I kind of have to ruin this box a little bit. Thanks, frickin' GameStop. But it is the special Mario character controllers, which apparently they have announced they're releasing other ones, I think. Um, I'm actually missing one of them, but I have it pre-ordered. Um, it's just Mario characters. We got Mario here, and then Yoshi here. I am missing Luigi. There's one more, but I originally just wanted Yoshi and Luigi, unfortunately, but they didn't have Luigi, so I just got the Mario, and then later I went back and I bought the Peach one, because it was the only other one I have. So pink, I just want to say that. Um, I... Originally was going to do an unboxing during this, but I don't think it's a smart idea to open any of these. And I have enough GameCube controllers, plus I'll use the Super Smash Brothers one probably. Um, fortunately, I had to ruin the box on the Peach one here a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, three of the four, and I, I think I remember seeing somewhere that they're releasing like a Donkey Kong and a Zelda one, and I will pick those up in a heartbeat, the, the Zelda one. Um, but we shall see. Um, three GameCube controllers. They're all going up on my shelf. They're they're called wired fight pads, but it's a GameCube controller, except with two extra buttons. It's a GameCube controller. I don't care what they say. <laughs> but here's, here's I'll give you a better look. This is the Peach one. Fortunately, none of them show Luigi, so I wonder if they like canceled it. This is Mario. Yeah. And then you got Yoshi. It's not quite as cool as you would expect. Yeah, it doesn't even show Luigi, so maybe that comes out later. But, yeah, I I wanted to go for the ones that I didn't think people would want to get, so I went for Luigi and Yoshi, honestly. Um, but, yeah, GameCube controllers. Uh, yeah. Then we go on to something special. For the third month in a row, I have a Legend of Zelda little mascot dangler. Um, so, if you remember, I've gotten Zelda here and this thingy. Um, so there's four left I need to get. So I'm hoping, and honestly the four I have left are the four I wanted the most. So let's see if we can get one good, a good one today or this month. 
I mean, I'll keep buying them because they're fairly cheap, but... Come on. Okay. There we go. It is the same fucking dude again. God damn it. Well, that's disappointing. I'm paying money for the same things over and over again. Why can't you just give me... I don't get it. There's four. Statistically, I should have gotten one of those. Because the chances of that are more... Just, oh, man. Oh, well. Crystal looks like you get a little figurine. But that is it for my collection update for October of 2014. I will see you at the end of next month. Hopefully, I'll have that Luigi controller. And there... Yeah, the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Sorry. Yeah. And then Super Smash for Wii U. Um, and maybe a few other things. Probably some Blu-rays and CDs again. We'll see. But, until next time.